Once again, we will be with you by introducing one of the provinces of Iran. In this program, we want to introduce Kerman Shah Province. Please stay with us. Kerman Shah Province is one of the 31 provinces of Iran. The province was known from 1969 to 1986 as Kermanshan and from 1986 to 1995 as Bakhtaran. The province's capital is Kermanshah, located in the middle of the western part of Iran. The city is built on the slopes of Mount Sefidku and was extended towards the south during the last two decades. The province has a rich Paleolithic heritage. Many caves with Paleolithic remains have been surveyed or excavated there. Some of these caves are located in Bisitun and north of Kermanshah. The first known physical remains of Neanderthal man in Iran were discovered in Bisitun cave. In May 2009, based on research conducted by the University of Hamadan and UCL, the head of the Archaeological Research Center of Iran's Cultural Heritage and Tourism Organization announced that the oldest prehistoric village in the Middle East, dating back to 9800 BC, was discovered in Sana, located in the west of Kermanshah. The monuments found in Kermanshah show two glorious periods, the Achaemenid and the Sassanid eras. It is the trade center of a rich agricultural region that produces grain, rice, vegetables, fruits and oilseeds. And there are many industrial centers, oil and sugar refineries, cement, textile and flour factories, etc. <music> Darius the Great's Bisitun inscription. Darius the Great's inscription at Bisitun, which dates from 522 BCE, lies some 1300 meters high in the mountains and counts as one of the most famous sites in Near Eastern archaeology. The Bisitun inscription is a multilingual inscription and large rock relief on a cliff at Mount Bisitun in the Kermanshah province of Iran, established by Darius the Great, 522 to 486 BC. Authored by Darius the Great sometime between his coronation as king of the Persian Empire in the summer of 522 BC and his death in the autumn of 486 BC, the inscription begins with a brief autobiography of Darius, including his ancestry and lineage. The inscription was illustrated by a life-sized bas-relief of Darius I the Great, holding a bow as a sign of kinship with his left foot on the chest of a figure lying on his back before him. The figure is reputed to be the pretender Gomata. Darius is attended to the left by two servants and nine one-metre figures stand to the right, with hands tied and rope around their necks, representing the conquered peoples. A forever half floats above, giving its blessing to the king. Targe Bastan. The rock reliefs at Targe Bastan lie six kilometres, four miles, northeast of Kermanshah where a spring gushes from a mountain cliff and empties into a large reflecting pool. One of the more impressive reliefs inside the largest grotto is the oversized depiction of Sassanid King Hosro II, 591 to 628 CE, who appears mounted on his favorite charger, Shabdis. Both the horse and the rider are arrayed in full battle armor. There are two hunting scenes on complementary sides, one depicts an imperial boar hunt and the other depicting the king stalking deer. Elephants flush out the boar from a marshy lake for the king who stands poised with bow and arrow in hand. These royal hunting scenes are narrative murals in stone and are counted amongst the most vivid of all Iranian rock reliefs. Kangavar Archaeological Complex Kangavar is the site of the archaeological remains 
of a vast Hellenic-style edifice on a raised platform. The visible remains at the site date to early Sassanid times, but the platform of the complex may be several centuries older. By the time excavation began in 1968, the complex had been preemptorily associated with a comment by Isidore of Carax, who referred to the temple of Anahita at Konkobar, the Greek name of Kangavar, which was then in Lower Medea. Despite archaeological findings to the contrary, the association with the divinity of fertility, healing and wisdom has made the site a popular tourist attraction. The vast edifice was built of enormous blocks of dressed stone with an imposing entrance of opposed staircases that may have been inspired by Apadana in Persepolis. Paru Cave. Parau or Paru is the name of a cave at 3,050 meters height in the Paru Mountain, which is located 12 meters from the northeast of Kermanshah City, among Ta'i Bustan Mountain and Behistun Mountain, and in the south of an area called Paru Square. It was the greatest vertical cave in the world at the time of its discovery more than 40 years ago in 1971. That's why it's called Everest of all the caves in the world. Today, many deep caves are discovered throughout the world, which are even deeper than Paru Cave, and have sent this cave down to rank 221 in the list of deepest world caves. One of the exquisite features of Paru Cave is its 3,000 meters height from sea level, which is the highest level from sea among all the caves in the world. Local dances in every corner of Iran are not only beautiful but have signs of mysticism, prayer and the martial arts. Kurdish music at first was epic and heroic. Verse readers, who were the most ancient Kurdistan composers, were often illiterate. But since earlier centuries till today, heroic stories have been converted to poem and composition, accompanied with melodies of the kettle drum and the trumpet. Later on, melodies, tunes and heroic tunes entered Kurdish music. Kurdish dances are rhythmic, forming a unity with all body movements. In most of the Kurdish dances, the dancers hold hands, taking steps in one direction, similar to a militia. Local clothes in Kermanshah. The traditional and local clothing of this region is among the most beautiful traditional clothes in the world, insofar as curd clothing has won several international prizes. The clothing of men is totally named Kukho Ranak, consisting of two main parts, a plain woolen blouse named Kukh and pants named Ranak. That is the famous Kurdish pants with tight legs. Curd men tighten a striped shawl around the waist, which is about 10 meters and is named Poshtveen or shawl. Their headdress is named Sarveen, that's a piece of fabric used instead of a hat. The clothing of women is usually recognized as a dress with a short vest over it. The dress that's highly decorated is named Karas, made of silk, lace, velvet, satin and guipure. Kwa is another long vest made of guipio or royal fabric that is worn over the kerosene in order to cover its back. Horoshe Kalal Badam To make this food, first lightly toast the almond slivers in a dry pan for three to five minutes over medium to low heat and set aside. Heat two to three tablespoons of oil in a large pot, saute the sliced onions over medium heat until translucent, add the garlic and saute 
for another two to three minutes, then add the turmeric. Stir well to blend every bit of onion and garlic with turmeric powder. Add the meat and brown on all sides. Add cinnamon, salt and pepper to taste and blend well. Scoop in the tomato paste and pour in enough water to cover the meat and to come about two inches above. Cover and cook for 30 minutes on medium to low heat. Add the almond slivers, mix well, cook and cover for another 20 minutes. Add water if needed. Add barberries and saffron, stir well, taste and adjust seasoning. Serve with warm rice, pickles, torshi, fresh herbs and yogurt. Dande Kebab Kebabs are one of the traditional Iranian foods that are prepared at many formal and indigenous ceremonies. Among these delicious kebabs is Dande Kebab, which is from Kermanshah. Dande Kebab is one of the original dishes of the Iranian western province of Kermanshah. Kebab Dande contains a large amount of lamb ribs, which are cut as wide as for Kubide Kebabs, and broiled in a certain way. Kerman Shahi chefs prepare a sauce with a combination of tomato paste, salt, pepper, lemon juice and saffron and pour it on kebabs repeatedly during the cooking and preparation process. After cooking it can be served with rice or bread decorated with onion, lemon and the sour orange. Handicrafts Kermanshah, since long ago, has been one of the most famous handicraft centres of Iran. One of the most important handicrafts of the province, that are mainly produced by villagers and tribes, is Giva. Giva is a soft, comfortable, durable and handmade shoe that's common in several parts of Iran, especially in rural and mountain areas of Kermanshah province. Giva is made up of two parts, sole and upper. The sole is usually made of rubber or leather and the upper is made of fabric created using an ancient technique known as nail binding, not weaving. And it predates knitting or crochet. Naan Berenji Naan Berenji are light and crunchy Iranian cookies made with rice flour. They are usually flavoured with rose water or cardamom, formed into flat round shapes, then decorated with poppy seeds, pistachios or barberries. These traditional cookies are typically prepared and enjoyed on Iranian New Year as a light afternoon dessert accompanied by a warm cup of coffee or tea. Even though they are eaten throughout the country, Naan Berenji cookies from Kermanshah region are believed to be the most authentic variety. Nan Kormai is a cookie made from dates, wheat flour, sugar, Kermanshi oil, saffron, water, rose water and eggs and is a souvenir in Kermanshah. Nan Kormai is made without sugar and its sweet taste is due to the presence of the nectar of dates and pieces of dates inside it. Two years ago, Iran's Kerman Shah province was hit by a devastating earthquake which left hundreds dead and thousands injured. The earthquake also left tens of thousands of people without home or shelter. More than two years after the disaster, the people of Kermanshah are still reeling in its aftermath due to the Iranian regime's corrupt policies and its mismanagement of the country's most vital needs. One Iranian resistance unit has travelled to Zapol Izahab and filmed a report on the conditions of the citizens of this small city, which was located in one of the areas that was hardest hit by the earthquake. As you can see, more than two years after the disastrous earthquake of Kerman Shah, the people of Zapol Izahab are still living in tents and makeshift trailers and are deprived of their most basic needs. 
The reporting resistance unit member says regime officials and authorities don't respond to the needs of the people. What should we do? Another video show houses that are still empty scaffoldings. This is the Fuladi section of zapol i -Zahab. These houses have been abandoned in this state because of the lack of funding, the reporter says. The government has refrained from sending relief efforts and engage in construction projects to rebuild the destroyed city. Many of the homes have not progressed any further than empty scaffolds because their owners can't afford to pay for the construction of their homes and the regime is doing nothing to help them. In another part of the city, the people are living in the Ahmad bin Ishak cemetery out of desperation and lack of access to proper housing facilities. Videos show tents erected amidst the graves and the people of the city living in harsh conditions. On December the 28th, 2017, Kermanshah became one of the several Iranian provinces to break out into protest. The demonstrations, which had begun in the northeastern city of Mashhad, Iran's second largest city, had spread to Kermanshah in the Kurdish west. The demonstrations had begun as protests against soaring prices, but quickly took on a political character as widespread corruption, as well as Iran's costly interventions in Syria and Iraq, became topics of public anger. Thank you for staying with us. We hope you enjoyed watching this program and we will continue to be with you by introducing other provinces. Music